Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, I'm not only a YouTube content creator, but I'm also a big fan of the content on YouTube. And because I'm in the fish world, YouTube is always uh, serving up and suggesting other fish-related content creators. And not that long ago, I came across somebody who I thought was putting out some pretty interesting content. I liked both the content and the look of, of the aquariums. They were very clean, impressive, and healthy looking. And so um, I reached out to him and said, hey, listen, uh, how about a, a collab, uh, a collaboration? And he agreed. And his name is David, and he is known as the Cichlid Charmer on, uh, on YouTube. So let's go ahead and jump into a one-on-one uh, -on -one with David and talk about his channel, his experience with cichlids, uh, and the details that motivate him to be a content creator on YouTube. So, uh, so how's it going there, David? How you doing? Hi, Ben. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on your show. What part of the country are you in, David? I live in a small place called Idaho, which it turns out is actually a real state in the U.S. Who would have guessed? It's just a short distance from Canada, so if I ever need to make a quick run from the law, I'm over the border in no time. <laughs> is, there a, is there an active fish keeping community in your area? Local fish groups? Not so much, Ben. I mean, we have enough people in the area, enough fish keepers in the area that we should be able to generate the interest to create a group, but maybe it's just that everyone's too busy. I mean, I certainly am super busy with my two other jobs. I'm a photographer and then I also work at Costco. I also, you know, make these videos, which takes a lot of time. I'm always working in my editing room, you know, getting all the stuff together, adding music and everything. And just a 10 minute video takes me about a day and a half. I mean, I'm talking about like eight hour days. And you're probably a lot quicker at it than I am. And you put out a lot of videos, Ben. I don't know how you do that. It takes a lot of time. So I don't know if I'd even be able to attend a group like that. So we kind of resort to what a lot of communities do. And that's just creating a local group on Facebook where you can share your ideas, your excitement, and then also, you know, your problems with fish and maybe get some answers there. But I'll get into that in a second here. Because how about local fish stores? What kinds of uh, selection do you have up there? Is there a are there some good stores that you can go to for quality fish? Or uh, tell me a little bit about what the local fish store scene is up in your area. As far as like fish stores go, local fish stores, we didn't have much at all until recently, but a store opened in Spokane, Washington that I absolutely love. It's called Fish World, and they have a, a decent selection of American and African cichlids as well as all kinds of other fish. But what I love about this place, Ben, is that they have a great selection of healthy, good quality fish and they take care of them. And that's the most important thing for me is knowing that my fish come from a good place that they're well taken care of. But an added bonus that's incredible is that the, one of the employees there who's the son of the owner, his name's Jordan, and I think he has a degree in microbiology, but he has a whole wealth of knowledge that I have tapped into quite frequently. And if I have an illness with my fish, I would much rather ask an expert on it than post it on Facebook, you know, a blanket question and get a uh, hundred different responses telling me basically a hundred different answers. You know, if you have a disease, ick is a good one. So people post something on Facebook and it looks like ick, but it's actually epistylus, which is similar to ick, but if you treat it like ick, it'll kill your fish even faster. I'd rather go to an expert and ask them. I get it on the time. I have a very similar situation now. Not because I'm working, I do work part-time, but. Uh, and I'm sort of semi-retired, which explains why I can get so many videos out. <laughs> but but uh, with two, two grand, grandkids uh, seven minutes away from me and, and, uh, and us trying to be involved and helping in, the, in their lives, that's, that's really, uh, really jamming up a lot of time in a very good way. That sounds like a real good scene with your local fish stores. I mean, I really like the idea of having uh, uh, available to you somebody who's that, that expert, and you're right. Uh, there are probably about as many opinions about about what you post as there are people out there. It, it's amazing how many different uh, reactions you'll get to posting or asking about something from you just need to do a water change all the way up to, you know, quarantine and, and uh, treat with the following regimen of meds. And you never know what you're going to get when you post something on YouTube. How do you get your hands on some of your cichlids? Uh, what's your, I mean, I know you, you must be getting some of them local. Uh, do you have any online 
any online uh, providers that you really have, have come to trust and like since you've been uh, in the cichlid world? I don't know if you've experienced this, Ben, but it is so freaking hard to get fish that you want off your list to add to your tanks. I mean, I, I look for months on end to get the fish I want and they're just not available anywhere. So when they come available, I jump on them and get them and sometimes I'm not even ready for them. I'll have to set up a new quarantine tank or put them in a tank that isn't completely ideal for them while I'm getting ready to put them in the uh, main tank just because you gotta get them when they're available or you might be waiting another year for them. So uh, I do get my fish from my local fish store but I also get them from online dealers that I'm pretty happy with. Ron Cichlids, which is absolutely stunning for their fish. They do sell mostly larger ones, so you're gonna pay a little bit more, but they're totally worth it. They're mostly African cichlids, by the way. Snake River cichlids, which also is all African cichlids, and they're really good quality fish. Live Fish Direct is one I use for both American and African cichlids, and they've been fantastic. And then Imperial Tropicals, which is also American and African cichlids, and they've been wonderful as well. So they were actually the first African cichlid shipment that I received in my experience with African cichlids was from Imperial Tropicals, and it's been great so far. So those are my online breeders and dealers that I use and my local fish store. Those are all legitimate, all legitimate uh, fish providers, uh, as far as both from personal experience and from what I've heard, every one of them that you mentioned. Now, do you uh, tell me a little bit about how you feed your fish? That seems to be a question that comes up every now and then. How are you feeding your cichlids currently? Funny that you'd ask that, Ben, because right after we're done talking, I'm going to start recording my next video on what, when, and how I feed all my fish. Their main diet, though, consists of north fin pellets. North fin pellets are great because they have high quality ingredients. The first three or four ingredients are the most important ones in your fish food, which you know, and they're all good, wholesome ingredients like salmon meal, krill meal, and things like that. You don't get wheat and other binders and fillers until you get farther down the line. I'll also throw in a little bit of Ron cichlid food and some TDO Chroma Boost, but the main bulk of it's gonna be North Fin. They're a, a small family-owned business from Canada, and their products have been something I've used since I've had African cichlids, and now moving on into American cichlids. Something else I do is weekly, I will give them a couple of treat days. So in the evening, I'll give them some shrimp that I actually buy frozen shrimp from Costco now. I used to buy frozen krill, but that stuff is super expensive at the pet store. So I'm just trying to save a little bit of money by getting shrimp at Costco. So these guys are eating like kings. And then I also feed them a day of veggies where I'll chop up some zucchini, blanch it, and that'll keep things moving through so they don't get that Malawi bloat, which is a really deadly illness. I think I'll come to your house and pretend to be a cichlid and get a nice shrimp meal. <laughs> That's some good feeding regimen, very similar to what I'm doing. Funny you should mention uh, Northfin. I just got uh, I just got this box from our friends from our friends up in Canada. Just a whole whole bunch of great uh, Northfin stuff. I dropped off some samples at my local fish store. I talked about it in a in a recent video, but yeah, the Northfin is legit. Uh, I also I also use Extreme, as you probably know. Uh, some of the um, Cunningham Tropicals, and I'm also I, I've just started feeding them some some frozen uh, energetics, right? Some Pisces energetics, some frozen krill, and also some frozen bloodworms for the South and Central American cichlids. But we we we, uh, we seem to be feeding in a, a very similar manner, with uh, high quality food with low fillers, and also uh, and also keeping an eye on on. Uh, I'm making sure there isn't there aren't, aren't any additives in there that we don't like any binding agents that are just going to give them bloat and and take time to digest but don't really provide any nutrition and also and also we provide a, a frozen treat once or twice a week i might have to try that frozen shrimp from costco i am a costco member so maybe i'll pick some of that up so is there a is there a fish currently that you would consider your favorite fish one that is your uh that maybe you spend a little more time looking at than the other ones? Well, no, Ben, I love all my fish equally. Just kidding. I totally have favorites. And my ultimate favorite is a Lake Victorian fish. He's a zebra obliquidens that we've named Zeke. Yeah, we name our fish. I don't know, I haven't heard that you name your fish, Ben, so maybe I'm just a weirdo, but we do name a lot of our fish here. Zeke is an amazing fish. He has the black stripes with yellow in between and then a red spot over his heart, so he's beautiful. But his beauty isn't why I love him so much. It's more of his personality as a fish. He's always been, if not the tank boss, then a powerhouse in the tank. 
but he doesn't use it for evil, he uses it for good. I mean, he's the kind of fish that I've always compared, and I don't know if anybody else does this out there, but I compare some of my fish to actors or movie characters. He's been like the Clint Eastwood of my tank. That's because he does what needs to get done. He's not a jerk about it. He goes and takes care of business like if a fish is being a jerk, he'll, he'll let him know that he's not to be messed with and then he'll just lay off of them. He doesn't chase other fish or cause problems. So he's just an incredible, strong, and silent, but deadly type of fish. I mean, you don't want to cross him. You don't want to cross this guy. Zeke is a beautiful fish. I don't keep Victorians and uh, currently, but that is one good looking fish. I get it. And I stopped, I stopped naming my fish because call me superstitious, but it seemed like every time I'd name one, uh, he would he would wouldn't last that long, and so I I stopped doing it. Pure superstition, uh, yeah, but no no real science behind that. <laughs> but uh, that is definitely one beautiful fish. Let's talk a little bit about filtration. How are you currently filtering your uh, your main cichlid tank? I wouldn't really say I have a main tank, Ben. I have three main tanks. I have my 180 gallon American cichlid tank, which has a lot of more mild American cichlids in it. I have some angelfish in there. I have some electric blue acaras. My red-headed tapahos, which were silver for about an entire year and just recently started coloring up and now they look beautiful. But I have a lot of interesting fish in there like my red-tailed shark. I like that tank. I love the way it looks. I found that driftwood at the river near where I live. And then I bought those standing logs from Aqua Decor to make the tank look exactly how I wanted it. I also have my 240 gallon African cichlid tank Alcatraz, which is full of mostly, or actually entirely, I think now, haps. I used to have some peacocks in there too, but they were a-holes, so mostly just the haps. And I think you probably have more haps than peacocks. I don't even know if you even have any peacocks now, Ben, do you? And then my 435 gallon, 10 foot long, American cichlid tank San Quentin. This tank is a custom aquariums built tank. They did a fantastic job on the tank itself. And I also got a sump from them, a seamless sump that's doing a great job filtering the tank as well. All the decor in the tank is provided from aqua decor, except for a few of the rocks are actually natural rocks. The branch, most of the rocks, and then these leaves, which I have some catapa leaves in there. Some of them look like normal catapa leaves and some of them look like they're decaying, which just adds a note of authenticity to everything else in the tank. I noticed you name your uh, tanks and your fish. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> After penitentiaries, so <laughs> were you in law enforcement at one point? <laughs> no, very, very cool. Those tanks are absolutely stunning. They're beautiful. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very impressed at, at how you're keeping them, how they look, and also the, uh, the combination of fish you have in there. Very, very nice. I kind of feel the same way. It would be hard for me to pick one tank uh, that is uh, my favorite. You like them each for different reasons. And uh, so I, I get where you're coming from. But very good job in those tanks. I love the way you've decorated them. And on the leaves, I, I also use leaves in my, in my community tank. And sometimes I'll drop some into a, a quarantine or a hospital tank. Uh, they do seem to add uh, both a, a, a good look and the fish seem to like them a lot. I know the, uh, the plecos, they love munching on those leaves. They turn them into a, a skeleton in no time. Let's talk a little bit about your YouTube channel. Why did you call it the Cichlid Charmer? So interesting thing about that is when I was coming up with the name for my channel, I didn't really think too long about it. I mean, it just kind of came to me. It was like Cichlid Charmer. And the reason was is because I started thinking about those snake charmers, you know, with those deadly snakes with violent dispositions. And they're just playing their little flute and getting it to do whatever they want it to do. Well, that's kind of like us with our cichlid tanks, right? I mean, especially the African cichlids. And then when you get the super aggressive American cichlids, we're like, we're charming our cichlid fish into getting along with each other. Because those guys are, are complete nut jobs. I mean, their main focus generally is eating and then killing everybody else. And somehow we're getting them to live together in a small glass box, which is incredible. I mean, we're kind of charmers of the fish world, I think. Plus the name sounded pretty cool. It does sound cool. It did catch my attention. And you're right, we, are, we do have to be a, a charmer to some degree. And, and you were right earlier in your observation, I am not keeping peacocks currently, mostly because they killed each other off. So um, I've, I've sort of left the peacock world and you would think the so-called predator haps, uh, you know, the, you think those would be the more aggressive, but in my experience they haven't been. So I have all haps right now in my African cichlid tank. And, uh, but I agree, that is a cool name. 
I think it, uh, it, we do have to be a little magical in keeping these aggressive fish together and uh, not killing each other. If you could state like a goal or a mission statement for your, for your channel, what, what would that be? What, do you, what are you trying to accomplish with your YouTube channel? My goal for the channel is really to generate and maintain interest in the hobby by making videos that are educational and fun at the same time. I mean, that's really it in a nutshell. I just want to entertain people while giving them information about how to keep their fish nice and healthy. Well, we're on the same page there. I, 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 I bring people along on my journey and uh, some of it is uh, some hit and miss. So I share the good and the bad and the whole purpose. My original mission statement was to uh, was to help people win in the hobby so that they stay in it because the hobby does need, uh, need it, it, it needs to, you know, it's growing, it needs to grow, and that growth occurs with education and encouragement. You and I are very much on the same page there. There are so many uh, YouTube channels these days dedicated to uh, fish care, fresh water in particular, and certainly with, with cichlids. Why, why would somebody watch the cichlid charmer? Yeah, Ben, are you ever right about that? I mean, when I started my channel, I didn't know about, how, I had a handful of fish YouTubers that I was watching, including your channel, but I had no idea how many channels were actually out there, and I'm still discovering some of them, and they're really good, a lot of them. So what, why would someone want to watch my channel instead of someone else's, or maybe as well as someone else's? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons that, a couple of things that I do that set me apart, and one of them is I try to include humor throughout my video because the, we're just talking about fish and sometimes that can get repetitious or dry or whatever and I just want to keep it light and I want to keep people having fun while they're watching my videos. And another thing that I do is I come from a background of photography so I have a lot of good quality photography gear, lighting and I understand composition and how to hold a camera and how to take video and I just want to include that in my videos and I think my videos actually have a, a different look and feel than most other channels and some people I think really like that, and others probably don't even notice it, but it's something that sets me apart. Plus I almost always wear black, and I know some of you think black is cool. <laughs> I did notice the quality of your filming, and uh, everything from lighting to uh, exposure, everything else looks very, very professional. That's one of the things that drew me to your channel, and, uh, and, and I do like that a lot. And humor, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I don't like to associate with folks who don't have a sense of humor, or take themselves too seriously, I think that's, uh, that's a bad sign. So uh, I think uh, we, we need some humor. On, in, in the fish keeping world, some people just take, take it way too seriously and, and take themselves way too seriously. So uh, yeah, that's a breath of fresh air in my opinion. How long has your uh, channel been active? And do, do you have some kind of a goal for sus subscriber count? Like are you shooting for a particular number that you'd like to see? I want all of the subscribers. My channel has been active for about two years, but only in the last 10 months or so have I decided to actually commit to putting high quality videos out every week. And during that time, I've seen a lot of growth in my viewership and subscribers. Right now I'm at about 16,000, almost 16,000 subscribers, which is pretty low on the scale. I would like to get to about 100,000 subscribers and I would like to have a lot of views on each video, but that's not really my main goal anymore. I, I recently decided that I'm not gonna rely on YouTube to give me my highs and lows, to make me feel good and make me feel bad because that's what happens. I mean, you put a good video out that gets hardly any views and you're kind of crushed by it. And then you put out another one that's pretty good, not as good as that one, and it goes crazy. And there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to a lot of it, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. And YouTube is a fickle beast that will destroy you if you let it. So I decided not to make videos based on what YouTube wants, but what I want. So my videos are gonna be things that I think my audience needs to hear that are entertaining, good quality videos, and I'm not gonna rely on YouTube to dictate what I'm gonna put out there. I think that's a great philosophy for anyone who wants to last on YouTube. You start to uh, consider your, your value or worth as a human being based on the number of views, you're gonna feel pretty crushed. <laughs> and I've had the same experience. You know, you, you, you put out a, uh, you, you spend hours editing a video, shooting it with your best equipment, and it hardly gets watched. Uh, you, you shoot something with your cell phone, it looks like it was filmed, uh, filmed with a potato, and, and it gets 100,000 views. So there's no rhyme or, or reason. You just gotta put out the content you feel good about. I'm 100% with you on that one. Are you on other platforms besides YouTube? I mean, if someone wanted to find you on a different platform, what, what, 
which ones are they and, and how would they locate you? I don't have an Instagram right now, but I do have a Facebook under Cichlid Charmer and then a Facebook group called Cichlid Charmer Fish Keepers, which fish keepers of any kind are welcome to join. Show us your tanks, ask any questions you have, and just be a part of the group. So David, what are your go-to channels on YouTube? Not just for fish, but for just in general, what do you enjoy watching, watching on YouTube? Oh man, there are a lot of great fish channels out there, Ben. I watch your channel, of course. I watch KG Tropicals. Uh, Cichlid Bros and Primetime Aquatics. As far as non-fish channels go, I like a lot of movies, so I watch Flick Connection, which tells me all the streaming movies that you may have missed, a lot of, a lot of movies that are lesser known, that are actually hidden gems. Then I also watch Studio Binder, which gives me a lot of ideas for creating visual content for my audience. So different angles with the camera that I can use, keeping interest, um, different lighting techniques, all kinds of things that have to do with film that I try to apply to my YouTube videos. When I'm trying to learn about YouTube and how YouTube works, what kind of videos the YouTube audience will like, then I watch Film Booth. A guy named Ed makes these wonderful videos with all kinds of great information about how to make your videos more interesting. But also, even if you're not interested in this kind of stuff, you gotta watch this guy because he's absolutely hilarious. Again, we're very, very similar in our approach. I, I, I do watch Flick Connection, I like to... <laughs> I also watch some of the... Uh, some of the nerd, right, uh, nerd channels on uh, like what's going on with uh, Game of Thrones or, or I guess the the, uh, the Dragon remake now and and things of that nature. And I'm also always watching uh, video about new lenses, film techniques, lighting techniques, uh, not just for YouTube, but just just interests me. And 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 I also do watch uh, a lot of. Uh, interesting uh, political commentary, news commentary, things of that nature. So uh, definitely there's, a, there's a, a wide range of things out there on YouTube. And uh, you and I are very, very similar in, 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 the, uh, in the landscape that we participate in. If somebody was thinking about starting up their first African cichlid tank, what would be the advice that you would give them? So if you're just getting into African cichlids or American cichlids and you haven't started yet, my biggest piece of advice to you is to do your research. Research the heck out of these fish before you even get your tank set up, before you get your first fish. Because the worst thing you can do is, is get a fish that you don't know that much about and put them with another fish that you don't know that much about in a tank that's the wrong size with the wrong parameters and you end up with a, a bunch of dead fish or maybe one fish that killed everybody else. So do your research, get the right tank size, get the right fish for your tank and you'll be a lot happier and so will your fish. So what is the best advice you've ever heard about keeping fish? Well, I've heard a lot of good advice on YouTube, but I think the best piece of advice I ever heard came from you, if I remember right, and that's to learn from your mistakes, right? Because we all make them. You've made mistakes, Ben, I've made mistakes. Everybody is gonna make mistakes. And when you do, you have to learn that it shouldn't beat you down and get you out of the hobby. When you make a mistake, grow from it, become a better fish keeper, and then you can also help others. You can prevent them from making that mistake or you can help them through it when they do. Now, I have a story about a complete disaster that annihilated almost all of my fish in Alcatraz, this tank over here. It was stupid. It was really stupid because I know better, but I was making a video at the time I was doing a water change. And I know that I don't have a big enough brain to do two things at once, but I did it anyway. And so when I got to the point where I needed to add dechlorinator, I totally skipped it because I was worried about making the video at the same time, a time-lapse video. Huge mistake. At the time, they had dosed the water tower with a big hit of chlorine, and you could smell it coming out of the tap. So I forgot to put dechlorinator in, and I noticed that my fish started just going to the bottom of the tank and some of them were having a hard time keeping upright. They were, and I was like, oh my gosh, what happened? Because I thought I had put chlorine in the, or dechlorinator in the water, but I later found out I didn't. I lost almost half of my, well, over half of my fish in that terrible disaster. So it was a total nightmare of a situation. I, I've lost fish before, but you know, it's one here, maybe two. And it's sad, but when you lose that many of them and it's your fault, and you're watching them die, it is a nightmare. And that could easily, 
destroy you and get you out of the hobby. And a lot of people responded on the video I made about that, saying that they did get out of the hobby. And they loved knowing that this had happened to other people. I've actually gotten even more into the hobby since then. I repopulated Alcatraz with some great fish, and I've gotten this tank over here, San Quentin, going. And now I'm into it more than ever. So don't let mistakes beat you down. Just grow from it and become a better fish keeper. That's all we can do. So true, so true. I have uh, my fair share of videos about disasters, <laughs> where there was oxygen, uh, unintentional oxygen deprivation, uh, the introduction of disease through a shortened uh, quarantine, uh, on and on. We learn the hard way, and there's two ways people react. They either give up, and you see that tank and, and equipment on Craigslist or on eBay, you know, for sale, or, or sitting by the curbside, or, or or you get back on the horse, and and you ask yourself, what did I learn? What was my takeaway? And you and I, again, very similar in that area. And in some cases, that disaster opened up a door into something else, uh, a sort of a reset that ends up being a bit more exciting than before. What's your favorite part about keeping African cichlids, large fish, big tanks? What do you enjoy the most about that? What's my favorite part of keeping African and American cichlids? Well, my answer probably isn't what you'd expect. It's not the fish themselves. It's not the, their beauty or feeding them, their personalities. It's, it's not having beautiful tanks in my house. And while I love all of those things, the most important thing about keeping these fish for me has been the challenge. Because we're keeping these nut job fish, and that's what they are. I call them nut jobs in all my videos because they're psychopaths. I mean, most of these fish, especially the Africans or Central American fish, want every other fish in the tank to die so that they can be the only one. And we're somehow able to keep these as fish keepers without killing each other. Being able to do that takes a lot of mental knowledge and diligence in making sure that everybody's okay all the time. If you're an African cichlid keeper or an American cichlid keeper, you're on your best A game all the time. I think that gives you a sense of confidence in the fish world that most people don't have. It wasn't until I got into African and American cichlid tanks not too long ago that I started feeling this extra confidence. I get that confidence in other parts of my life too. And maybe it's the same with your audience, Ben, I don't know. You're right about that, David. They are nut jobs. I talk about that little switch in their brains that at any moment can, uh, can flick and, and they're, we're, out, we're off to the races and they're killing each other. And so you, you're right. You, you have to keep your head on a, on a swivel, always be alert. And, and watching and and sometimes I wonder if, if there's a fight going on when I'm filming in the tank behind me <laughs> is someone killing it someone I've had people during live streams actually uh, comment uh, hey what's going on between those two fish behind you and uh, so you, you're right it, it really is a challenge and when you feel like you have it dialed in even though it might be temporary you feel really really good so David I want to thank you for spending the time with me uh, I, I really enjoyed your comments, really enjoyed looking at your tanks and, and hearing your viewpoint. I'm really looking forward to watching your channel grow. Oh, thanks again, Ben. It's been an honor. And I, I have to tell you that since I created my YouTube channel, I've always had it in the back of my brain that someday I would love to be on your channel. And when I got that invite to do a collaboration with you, I was, I was completely thrilled. And now I'm on your show. And I just want to say thanks again. My pleasure, David. I, I, I think that uh, there should be more collaboration on YouTube. Sometimes it can feel a little bit competitive, but you know what, there's enough, uh, there's enough fish keepers out there for all of us, and I think collaboration is a great thing, and I really like what you're doing. So uh, thank you so much, thank you so much. And thank all of you for, for watching this interview. Be sure to check out The Sick and Charmer. I'll uh, definitely include a link below. And that's it for me today. If you'd like to subscribe, be sure to hit me in the mug up here. And if you'd like to uh, uh, continue watching some, some fun videos, check out my best my best tips list up, up, up in this corner. And, and that's it for now, my friends. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.